In Math 30-1 today, we're going to look at topic 8.3, the laws of logarithms from page 392. Our first law is called the product law. This says any log m times n is the log of m plus the log of n. Remember that logs are exponents, which allows us to do this. The second law is called the quotient law. As you can imagine, the log of m divided by n is the log of m minus the log of n. Lastly, the power law of logarithms says that the log of m to the power of p is going to equal p times the log of m. And base c is going to be the same constant in all of them. Let's do an example. In 1, we're going to write each expression in terms of individual logs of x, y, and z. In A, we have logs base 5 of x times y divided by z. So what we can say now is we're going to have log base 5 of x times y minus the log base 5 of z. And then we can go on and expand it further by saying it's going to be the log base 5 of x plus the log base 5 of y minus log base 5 of z. And that's it. Simplified. In B, we have log base 7 of the cubed root of x, which we can rewrite as log base 7 of x to the power of 1 -third. Then we can bring down the 1 -third in the front to say it's equal to 1 -third times the log, log 7 of x. And that's it. In C, log base 6 of 1 over x to the fifth, or x squared, is going to be log base 6 of x to the power of negative 2, so that'll be negative 2 times log base 6 of x. And in D, we have log of x cubed over y times root z. This time, we're going to say we got the log of x cubed minus the log of y root z. We can expand it further to say 3 times the log of x minus the log of y and now we're also going to say plus the log of z root z and since we're subtracting all of that we're going to say it's 3 times the log of x minus the log of y minus one-half log z because root z is z to the power of a half. Here's some your turn questions that you can try. And start again and we're going to put the answers up for you. See how you did. There we go. Here we are in example two, using the law of logs to simplify and evaluate each expression. A. Log base six of eight plus log base six of nine minus log base six of two. Well, we can combine all those to say log base six of 8 times 9 divided by 2. And that'll be log base 6 of 72 divided by 2, which is 36. And the log base 6 of 36 is, of course, 2. P, log base 7 of 7 root 7. Well, there's different ways we can do this. I could say that it's 7 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of a half, so that would be 7 to the power of 3 halves. Therefore, I could bring the 3 halves down and say it's 3 halves times log base 7 of 7, and log base 7 of 7 is 1, so 3 halves times 1 is 3 halves. Part C. 2 log base 2 of 12 minus the log base 2 of 6 
plus one third log base two of twenty seven. Well, first of all, we're going to take that two in the front and we're going to put it back as an exponent on the twelve. So we're going to get the log base two of twelve squared minus log base two of six plus log base two of twenty seven to the third. Now we're going to have log base two of one hundred and forty four minus log base two of six plus log base two of three. Now if we simplify it was in the brackets first, we're going to have log base two of one hundred and forty four minus log base two of eighteen. There we go. And now that we're subtracting, we can divide those and get 144 over 18. So we got log base 2 of 8. And of course, log base 2 of 8 is 3. That's our answer. Next one. Example 3. Use the law of logs to simplify expressions. Log base 7 of x squared plus log base 7 of x minus 5 log base 7 of x divided by 2. Well, here we have log 7 of x squared plus log 7 of x. We can multiply those two. And we've got 5 over 2 log base 7. So we're going to put that exponent of 5 over 2 back on the x. Now, I have an x squared plus an x to the power of 1. We can add those, and then we can subtract the 5 halves. So basically what we're going to have is log 7 of x, and then we're going to have 2 plus 1 minus the 5 halves. And that's going to be x to the power of 1 half. So in our final form, we're going to say that that's equal to 1 half times log 7 of x. And that should be log 7 of x. And x is going to be, of course, greater than 0. In our last one, we have log base 5 of 2x minus 2 minus log base 5 of x squared plus 2x minus 3. So the first thing we can do is divide them, put them on top of each other. Now I can factor those two expressions to get log base 5 of 2 times x minus 1 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. Now we can cancel the x plus x minus 1's and we're left with log base 5 of 2 over x plus 3. But now we still have restrictions that we have to we have to take into account. And now, in order for our expressions to work, we have to be greater than zero for both of our logs. So the original expression to be defined, both logs must be defined. First of all, 2x plus 2, that has to be greater than zero. So if we solve for x, adding x, adding 2 to both sides, and dividing by 2, you're going to find that x has to be greater than 1 in the first term, the first log. In the second log, we can factor it, and we know that it has to be greater than 0. This is going to be greater than 0. Well, we know when it's equal to 0. It's equal when x is negative 3, and it's equal to 0 when x is equal to 1. However, both of those are outside of the accepted domain of the first one, where x has to be greater than 1. So we don't have to worry about expressing any of those. And as well, this is where x is going to be less than negative 3, or greater than 1. And we can throw out the x is less than negative 3, and just go with the x greater than 1 for the second one. So what we found is that x is less than negative 3 can be eliminated and that both are satisfied when x is greater than 1. That is the domain that we have to go with and the restriction that we have to use.
That's our answer. So our assignment is page 400, numbers 1 to 12.